Hi, welcome to Spencely Design Co. I'm Miranda. And I'm Eric. And today we wanted to show you how we built these super simple planner boxes that will attach to almost anything. Let's get started. If you've been following our videos, you know that we recently got rid of this planner storage combo thing that we built about two years ago. It worked well, but we just didn't need it anymore. We decided to upcycle that into a new patio table, and while that project is perfect for our needs now, we're missing one thing. Where do I plant flowers? Well, sounds like we need to open up the shop and knock out an easy DIY project. I braved going to our home center during the coronavirus lockdown and was able to come home with some cedar fence planks unscathed. Oh, and this project was suggested by one of our Instagram followers, Emmy Bem Designs. We love hearing your suggestions, so let us know what you want to see down in the comments. Anyway, my preferred way to cut things is with the table saw. However, you can absolutely use a miter saw, a circular saw, a jigsaw, or even a handsaw. I'll show you later to prove it. Wait, 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 Eric. Tell them there are free plans linked down below. No, they obviously know there's free plans. There's a clip of you looking at the plans. Just tell them. Okay, there are free downloadable plans linked in the description below. I marked out 36 inches to cut down one of the sides for the planner. With the side cut, I stacked my cut piece on top of my other board and traced it to ensure the boards were of equal length. Then I just made a cut right to that line. Like I said earlier, you definitely do not need a table saw to finish this project. Any saw will work since we're just making easy cross cuts on a plank. Now if you're using a circular saw or a jigsaw and you want to get a nice straight line, just clamp a straight edge to the board and you're good to go. Don't have a circular saw? Well, a miter saw works great too. Back over at the table saw, I worked on cutting all the pieces down to their final length by setting up a stop block on the crosscut sled. This isn't anything special, but it speeds up the process of cutting the wood to specific lengths without having to measure every single time. With the block tightened down, I first cut off a tiny sliver from the end of the board and then pressed it against the stop block. I can then repeatedly cut down pieces until I have as many as I need at each specific length. As I cut down these pieces, I wanted to invite you to check us out on Instagram at Spensley Design Co. If you're like me and you love seeing exclusive behind the scenes photos and videos of projects before they land here on YouTube, you're going to love what we have there. No pressure, but check us out, and if you're interested in what we're sharing, consider following us. Thanks! So at this point we have everything cut down. So we've got three boards that are 36 inches long, six that are three and one quarter inch long, three that are five and a half inches long, and then the last two pieces are four and seven eighths inches long. But you'll notice we have double the wood, and that's because I wanted two planner boxes. So we're now ready for Miranda's favorite part. The glue up. Good. Oh, I feel like such an idiot. All right. To get the construction of these planter boxes going, we first grabbed some five and a half inch pieces. We spread a liberal amount of Tight Bond 3 wood glue on each piece and then used some brad nails to hold them in place while the glue dried. You definitely don't need a nail gun though. You could just hammer in nails or use some clamps to hold everything together until the glue dried. Those end pieces should be slightly inset so that a four and seven eighths inch piece can be glued and nailed on to create the ends of the planter. We then tilted the planter on its side to attach one of those 36 inch long pieces. With one side attached, we flipped the planter box over again and started gluing and nailing three and one quarter inch side supports on. You could probably get away without these, but I wanted to add them to make sure we had as much rigidity to the planter as possible since wet soil can weigh a lot. While I attach this last side, we want to ask for your help in growing our small channel. If you're enjoying this video and want to help support us, hitting that thumbs up button really helps us out. As always, no pressure, but we'd really appreciate it. Thanks! With the other side on, the last pieces we needed to glue on were some more 3 and one quarter inch side supports. These are again glued and nailed to the side of the planner to provide additional support. 
So now that the planer box is built, we grabbed our drill bits and inserted a 5 16 inch drill bit into our drill. I drilled two holes in the bottom of the planer box so that we could insert these U-bolts. This is what is going to hold the planer to the railing of our patio. While we had the drill out, we also needed to drill some drainage holes on the bottom. Because we were both a little OCD, we took way too much time measuring out where all the drainage holes should go, but it's a little touch that makes us both happy. To finish off the planters, we wanted to lay down some black bed liner. This will help keep the moist soil inside the planter and prevent it from washing away through the drain holes. Precision is not necessary here. Just press it into the planter and then trim an oversized piece off. Now I still haven't learned how to cut a straight line or draw between the lines for that fact, so I folded over the top edge to hide the butchering I did on the fabric. I could then clamp the planter liner down and attach it with a staple gun. If you don't have a staple gun, you could also just hammer in a few nails to help hold the fabric up. Or if you're feeling wild, just skip the fabric altogether. Now that the planter boxes are finished, I took them outside and set them on top of our patio railing. I grabbed one of the U-bolts and placed it around the railing and then through the holes that we drilled in the bottom of the planter. Then, just place the retaining washer thing down and thread it on the nuts. After I filled the boxes up with soil, Miranda could plant some flowers and give them that perfect finishing touch. And hopefully this inspired you to build some planters of your own. Maybe your old ones are in a condition that you'd no longer consider to be mint, 